The year is 1988 and British Telecom along with STC, France Telecom and 9X is the first company about to make the leap into the emerging world of radio, telephony and digital communications by developing PhonePoint. In previous instalments we've looked at the PhonePoint system that BT provided as well as the more popular Rabbit system but in this episode we'll be taking a deeper look into the world of Telepoint. Rather than a service that was predicted to be meteoric in its ambitious rise to dominate the communications market, it was a complete failure. So join me at the beginning. BT has high hopes and a big vision for CT2 Telepoint and is already planning their phone point system. This brief period in radio and phone communications history is quite expansive. In fact, Rabbit hasn't even been developed yet. During the late 1980s, the days of standing in line at a train station or airport for an available BT or Mercury payphone were numbered. The cordless telephone was moving out of the home and office and going public. A phone point situated in a public place would give fast digital access to the public switched telephone network. Provided you remember to take with you your lightweight battery powered telephone handset, you would be able to communicate with the world. And driving the cordless revolution, or more accurately, the new generation of cordless telephones known as CT2, was the British Telecom Research Laboratories at Martlesham near Ipswich. The CT2 development team there was integrating technology such as radio, telephony and digital communications for over six years, with the vision being that CT2 would be key to personal mobile telecommunications, achieving an even greater user base than the cellular telephone network. Cordless phones at the time, operating on a standard known as CT1, provided a relatively basic service, substituting an analogue radio link in place of the cord between the handset and base of a normal telephone. This provided the user with increased mobility, typically of up to 200 metres, with a telephone base acting as the recharging unit for the battery-powered handset. For British Telecom, the problem relating to the first generation cordless phones was actually their success. In the UK by the late 1980s, the domestic user had already reached almost a 7% market saturation point with over a million cordless phones in place, all providing a potential source of interference with their neighbours' cordless systems. By the early 1990s, this nuisance factor would be even more of a problem with an anticipated 5 million cordless phones in use. The new generation of digital cordless telephones operating on CT2 fell somewhere between cellular radio and the payphone service, providing more potential than any existing telephony system and providing a better solution than even the standard issue wired phone. When used at a public phone point, the digital CT2 handset would operate to a low-powered radio terminal, with the signal being received by a base station which linked the call into the national telephone network. Unlike the first generation CT1, with one of eight preset frequencies, this new digital version would incorporate some 40 channels with built-in software intelligence automatically allocating the least congested frequency. CT2 Telepoint used a mixed frequency division multiple access, or FDMA, and a time division duplex, or TDD, mode of operation. This allowed a single radio channel to support two-way or duplex speech through the use of a single block of radio spectrum, rather than the paired frequency arrangements found in conventional duplex mobile radio systems. With TDD, the handset transmits for a short period, while the base unit at the public access point receives, and vice versa. This involves both the handset and base station being synchronised, and at either end of the link the input speech is digitised, stored for one burst period and transmitted in the next. Accordingly, transmission is time compressed by a factor of two. At the receive end of the link, packages of burst speech are recombined and converted from digital to analogue form. In the UK, 40 channels were allocated to CT2 between 864.1 and 868.1 MHz. Base units scan these 40 channels using a channel selection algorithm. If the handset and base station were within working range of each other, the algorithm dictated that both select the same vacant radio channel for communication. The CT2 base station, known as a black box, was not much bigger than a shoebox and could be situated out of sight on a wall. 
In the office, the idea was that CT2 would replace the need for expensive wiring, giving every business user the opportunity to have a cordless handset. British Telecom were developing a complete range of business products from a simple cordless extension to a full cordless PBX. The key to the new British Telecom system was the CT2 dynamic channel allocation, which could automatically allocate any of the 40 available channels during usage. While the first generation for CT1 phones had allowed up to 100 users per square kilometre, the CT240 channel allocation would serve some 5,000 users per square kilometre in a residential environment. For British Telecom in particular, standards were the main concern, especially standards which governed the number of radio channels and frequencies and the method in which speech was digitised and transmitted. Oftel, the UK Telecoms Authority, were maintaining a close interest in emerging UK standards, which would hopefully be accepted in Europe. And it was planned that once CT2 was adopted as a standard in Europe, up to 70% of all extensions could eventually be cordless. Body profiled, low powered cordless handsets could be used to make a public switch network telephone call from a variety of phone points with computers handling user authorization and billing procedures. Locations included stations, airports, restaurants, stores, motorway laybys, garages, hospitals, and many other places. Providing the CT2 user stayed in range of the base station or phone point, and at a distance of up to 250 metres depending on the terrain, users could enjoy a full-scale digital service. Major features of the CT2 standard included security of call setup and billing, communications privacy, resilience to and the ability to avoid interference, dependable call setup and continuity, and transmission quality. However, the main drawback of CT2 was that when it was used in conjunction with the public phone points, it was unable to handle incoming calls. However, by combining CT2 with a national paging service, incoming calls could be noted and returned from the local phone point. With over half a million wide area pages already in use in the UK at the time, BT didn't see any problem in establishing two-way communications even to the extent of building an inbuilt pager within the CT2 handset itself. Users were able to choose whether the payment charges should go to their home or business address. By means of secure coding, it would even be possible to relate to the caller's credit card, and all methods incorporated a user validation pin and security check. A handset on phone point cost £245 and a base station £195, Customers also had to pay a £20 connection charge with a monthly rental of £8. Calls were charged per minute at between 10p and 55p off-peak and between 13p and 85p at all other times. The volume of calls from the proposed phone points was expected to dramatically increase with CT2 providing the right package of facilities for the communications market. The UK had achieved a world lead, one which was to pay high technological dividends well into the future. The 1992 European Harmonisation Policy would give an additional boost to digital cordless systems and by that time Europe was expected to have firmed up on standards and it was expected that British Telecom and other service providers would have implemented CT2 products and phone point operations widely. Industry experts predicted phone points being installed in trains and acting as PC modems and providing cordless fax facilities. Up to 10,000 phone points were expected to be in place within the first two years of being introduced and don't forget to take your phone could have soon been a standard reminder as users left their home or office. So we'll leave the story here for now in August of 1989. In the UK at this time CT2 has arrived much sooner than anticipated and Ferranti is expected to offer an interim standard system with the blessing of Oftel with a field trial of zone phone points already taking place. This is planned to launch in October of 1989. By now, there is a large number of applicants all winding up for the opportunity to provide UK telepoint services, and these include Ferranti, Philips, Mercury, Raycal, and GEC Marconi Telecommunications, who are amongst those hoping to win one of four promised DTI allocations. So join me in the next episode as we look into zone phone the first competitor to BT's phone point.